look at Celasta, the Crown of the Magister, which is a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition based game. I think it's based on the Rift Wars. Bear with me while I get the, uh, the stream set up here. Like it's up and running. I'm in a new studio, so hopefully everything's looking and sounding like it should. So there's still a limited, excuse me, a limited subset of uh, races to choose from and classes to choose from. But 
for example, let's go and look at the dwarves. There's two lineages there, snow dwarves and hill dwarves. Um, high elves, you've got the high elf and the sylvan elf, and then halflings, you've got the marsh halfling and the island halfling, and then humans and half elves as well. And then they give you a good description of what the ability increases are, your ability to choose between male and female. Now, the, the character customization is not great from a portrait or uh, personalization standpoint, but from a gameplay standpoint, I really like what they did in comparison to Baldur's Gate 3. So let's give you an example. Let's go ahead and pick a human, and you can see that we get plus one to all of our ability scores and the languages that we get to choose. Um, it also tells you what your movement is and what your proficiency bonuses are for your character character go to the next screen and now we can choose our class so we can choose a cleric and then it tells you which domains you have to choose from which would actually come later uh, so you get fighter with your martial martial archetypes champion mountaineer spellblade paladin and then your both choices are there ranger Currently, you have Hunter, Marksman, and Shadow Tamer. Rogue, Thief, Dark Weaver, and Shadow Caster. And then Wizard with your Arcane Tradition. So, Shock, Lore Master, and Green Mage. So, there's some pretty in depth stuff, especially for early access. Uh, so, let's go ahead and we'll just We'll just pick a random one here. Let's do wizard. Oh, also, it tells you what you start with, and you can edit your equipment based on uh, the player's handbook rules. So you can start with core staff or a dagger. You can start with a component pouch, or you can change that to something else if you want to. We'll stick with the component pouch. And then your pack type. Your spell book. for all the different classes you get to choose from different starting equipment, which is kind of cool. So this is another thing that I really like about their character creation is the ability to choose your background, which does have an effect on your gameplay. So for instance, for a wizard, um, there's probably some better choices here than there would be for other classes, right? So an academic, history and magic, right, or acolyte. Um, that would probably be great for a cleric, aristocrat. You know, that might be great for a paladin. Um, but you could really kind of change it up a little bit, and depending on what you choose, how you interact with NPCs in the game is going to, to vary as well. So let's go academic. And then this does allow you to choose uh, an alignment as well in two different spots. So personality flags here, you can choose from a few different things that are going to determine whether or not you're, where you stand on the alignment chart, I guess is the best way to put it. So I'm going to go, just just for time's sake, we'll go with pragmatism and egoism. And then down here, you can only choose two, and for this particular one, there's only two to choose from anyway, so pragmatism and also choose the alignment. So we'll go with, uh, let's go with neutral then for this guy. Oh, and then once you pick that alignment, then it gives you uh, extra choices, right? So uh, again, I'll go with pragmatism to reinforce that, and then we'll go with caution. And you can see it gives you the description when you mouse over it, uh, what that's going to tend to. This is another thing that I really like. You can go with uh, a random dice roll for your ability scores, or you can go with point buy, which is something that I definitely prefer because I like to min-max. So if you want to just role play and go with something random, you have the ability to do that. Or if you're a min-maxer like me, then you have the option to do point buy and you can increase your ability scores that way. 
So we're going to go ahead, since he's a wizard, and max out his int, and we're going to max out his dex. Constitution is always important. And then we don't want to be taking a negative. Now, obviously, if you want to role play, you know, you can increase whatever you want to here. Let's go with charisma. One more point. We're gonna get extra points through the level ups, so let's put the odd number in constitution. And then it tells you everything you need to know about your character over here. Proficiencies, how many hit points, how many hit dice, all that good stuff, what your initiative score is. Alright, so now we get to choose our class skills. Generate those or pick them manually yourself. You can see which ones you're allowed to choose because they have the outline in the box. So let's go with an extra point in history and religion. Actually, no, medicine. And then the languages, you can customize that as well. So everything that's already grayed out, I believe, are things that either you can't speak or you already speak. So you can see we already speak common. Let's go ahead and add old Termarian and now we get background languages. spell selection here, so we get three cantrips, which these are pretty much auto-cast. So let's do Firebolt, Light, and Ray of Frost. And then we get six class spells to choose from as a wizard, so This is the part that's not exactly uh, fully fleshed out yet, I don't think, for them. There's not a lot to choose from as far as identity customization. Um, we'll just choose some random names here, and then obviously you can choose between male and female. Um, you know, not a lot of skin tone to choose from, not a lot of facial types to choose from. Not a lot of hairstyles to choose from, but ultimately, to me, this game is more about gameplay than it is about what your character actually looks like. So, uh, I'm okay with that, and I would assume that they're going to flesh this out a little bit more you know, as, as the game develops. You are a true are you still savior. With us? Heave! Now! All your strength! For purposes of demonstration. So that's how you create a new character. So we can see what my mission is over here. This tells me um, 
what shape my party is in. And then I kind of like the traveling as well because it's, it's much more tabletop-like than uh, a more action-based game like Baldur's Gate because when I select where I want to go and travel there, now I pick how I want to travel. So if I want to go slow, there's less chance of me being ambushed or running into um, combat of any sort. Normal and then fast are the things that you can choose from there. And then you've also got your default travel settings here. So you can interrupt your travel when your long rest has been completed. That allows you to do things like change out your spells and things like that. Um, interrupt when an item has been crafted and interrupt on the level up. So you can see it tells you how far from where you are to where you're going, what the distance is, how long it's going to take, and how many required rests there are in there. And then it gives you a little journal. And if you have things like a ranger in your party, then you might like to find food. Hey, Jacob. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. This is like, you know, here's what everybody's doing while you're going along the way. And then you arrive there. And if you want to review what happened while you were on your journey, because it does go by a little bit quickly, then you can just go back into your journal and read up on exactly what happened while you were traveling. journal it will tell me scroll back here just so we can see so this is when we started to travel and then it tells you everything that you did so you can review all of that inside of your journal if you want to and food does take part uh, have a place in here so you can see like uh, one day we didn't find any food but we had rations to, to begin with. So you can see here we consumed four units of food. That's one ration, essentially. Uh, we collected some ingredients. Uh, Tyen, who's my ranger in the party, killed a couple of partridges, so we got four food rations back, which means we don't have to buy those again. I don't know that this stuff means anything at this point. They're probably gonna flesh that out again. It's early access still, so. And then it gives you our, our current task. So meet with Karen at the Gravekeeper's Cask. And you can fast travel by on the on the standard map if you want to. It is the one thing that uh, that I've found so far that's a little tough is navigating the the overview map because directions aren't necessarily always clear as to where you are and where you need to go on the compass. At least I haven't been able to figure it out yet. I mean, it does tell me where north is, but it doesn't really seem to correlate with north here. Like, I don't know what north on the map is. There's no direction on here that tells me, oh, that way is north. But it does tell you where your quest actually is in relation to you on the map, so you should be able to figure it out from there. Oh, here you are. How was the mission? Not paid enough. Who is? When can we hope for an audience? It depends. Tomorrow, if you're lucky, another party came back yesterday, and they still have to make their report. So maybe they'll see you both at once. Listen, we can't wait around here. What we've got is big. The outpost at KLM has been attacked. Almost all of the garrison was killed. By all the gods! Meet me in the council chamber. I'll inform my superiors. 
The Legacy Council is now in session. Captain Merrin has the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, your Royal Highness, my party and I have made a very worrying discovery in the Badlands, near the place we call Black Hill. We saw a group that we took to be scavengers. They attacked us right away, but we were able to fight them off. They were trying to get away with this. What is it? This box contains a gem. A ruby, it appears. We have determined that it has magical properties, and we believe the Council should examine it. So we will, Captain. But really, is that all? You called an emergency meeting of the Council for a simple magical gem? Her Royal Highness has a busy schedule. Please, Lord Denantar. In this chamber, I am just a student of magic. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Anyway, Captain. The Council has a great deal of business. They were Sorax, our attackers. Not scavengers, not bandits. Sorax. Hmm. Sorax? Is this a joke? The sor Akath are no laughing matter, Lord Fasek. Oh, you know what I mean. What do you mean, my lord? How many times has the Council heard tales of these so-called Sorax? At least twenty, I'd say. More. Twenty-three. Yes. More each year. It's becoming a fad. I'm sorry, Captain, but you are certain that you encountered Sorax? It's true, they're real. What? And who might you be? Some new recruits, my lord. They were sworn in quite recently. New recruits, eh? They place too much stock in rumor, it seems. They assure me that they saw Sorax as well. Wait, do you realize how serious this is? And then these answers are based on your race, your class, uh, your ability skills, different things. So these answers will change depending on what your, your attributes are. They attacked the Kerlem outpost. The garrison suffered severe losses. Kerlem? The outpost in the marches? What do you mean by heavy losses? The Sorax took over Captain Henrik, and only two of them are still alive. They can testify too. Do you have any material proof of their existence? I beg your pardon? Like what? Well, a dead body, for example? Or even just a head? If we go to Care Lem, will we find the bodies of these Sorax? Probably not. They took their dead with them when they retreated. The bodies of their victims, too. Hmm, how very convenient. So you can offer us no proof of this adventurer's fable. And what if proof were to be brought before the Council? What proof? How? If the Sorax take away their fallen, as they say, that's not our problem. Let them find a way. These are new recruits, correct? Then let this be their new mission. Bring us the head of a Sorak for the whole council to see. That would certainly be proof, Lord Fasek, would it not? Oh, very well. Meanwhile, the council will examine the gem. Uh, if there is nothing else... Dean Ayala Fasek of the Tower of Knowledge calls for a recess. Does any member object? No? And of course, you can skip through all the dialogue if you want to just by pressing spacebar. That actually went better. Who's the grumpy dwarf woman? Chancellor Hertha Gorm's daughter of the... G She's... well, yes, quite. Anyway, some people might want to talk to you after this. Working for the council, you are expected to be neutral. But? But you have the right to have friends. So, feel free to... As long as your allegiance remains to the council as a whole. All right, then. So that is another big difference between this game and some others, is it's pretty linear. Um, you can wander around, but for the most part they keep you on a track. So, you know, here are the, here are the quests, here are the places you need to go to move the quest forward. There's not a lot of freestyle experience or wandering around. So, who do we need to talk to? Beryl or Dahlia? Well, if it isn't our brave saviors. Good day, Lieutenant. I'm no longer a Lieutenant. I resigned my commission. I work for my people now. I will never step foot in the Badlands again. Yes, well, you clearly weren't cut out for that posting. I've made my peace. 
But you aren't here to check on my welfare, are you? No, we have questions. Your scout. Do you know where he was before the attack? You mean Daliat? Right, Daliat. Where did he go before the Sorax attacked? As far as I know, there's not a name for this place or road that leads there. But I can show you on the map. It's near the ruins of an ancient tower. Thank you, Beryl. We appreciate the help. What are you thanking me for? Sending you to your death? And you can always check what your newest quest is. It shows up in the menu over there, but it also tells you in your quest log. Also in your adventures log, if it's brand new, you can see what it is there. You can also tell the things that you've met, the things that you've killed, things that you know about now, what factions you've met, um, and then the tutorial. Clear skies, my friends. Nobody. Angry bush. I'm curious. This part of the interface is definitely much better fleshed out than BG3. Much easier to do character selection so that people aren't just dragging along and following with each other. Oh. Crafting ingredients. The other thing I should do is I should probably find a place to sell I believe is the scavengers headquarters they'll actually go back to where you adventure and pick up stuff that you left behind and split the profits with you that way you don't have to carry everything that you want to sell and you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going over your encumbrance allowance First time I've actually done this, so I'm curious to see how the mechanic works. Hello, Annie. You're back. How did it go? Well, Captain Henrik is dead. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, who's in charge then? You might have to wait before going to KLM, I'm afraid. I see. Well, not your fault. Thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. Well, thank you. I guess that's it for us. Stay in the light, my friends. All right, so that completes the quest. Now, if I talk to her again, apparently I can't. Ah, there we go. Hello, Annie. We wanted to talk about Care Lem. I'm all ears. No one's there anymore. Ah, you want to claim the place. How does it work again? We go there and scavenge everything you didn't take. And you get a percentage. We can't promise you it's safe. <laughs> it never is. Once we get there, we'll set up an outpost of our own. I'll check with the council first, but thanks anyway. What do we do next? Once we've done our work, I'll let you know. You'll just have to come by and collect your share. Okay, so it's all automated. Before we head out, do I need any more supplies? What's this? 
apparently somebody I should talk to. Visit the magic shop. I don't have a spellcaster in my party. So currently I'm fighter, cleric, ranger, rogue. figured out the crafting menu yet and I'm not sure if they've completed it Sure, that should be no, not now. That's another nice thing is you can share all of your items pretty easily amongst the party just by hitting the share button. Okay, so that's why I really haven't been able to do anything with the crafting menu yet, is because I don't Hello. know any recipes. How may I help you? expensive. So you can hit pool and that puts all of your gold together or you can hit share and it splits everything up. Since we actually don't know any recipes, I'm not going to buy any ingredients. Hello. What do you sell here? Mostly potions, for here I also have recipes for customers who like to craft their own. And ingredients, too. Even rare- Come back any time. I didn't see any recipes. Magical devices, adventuring gear, crafting, ingredients. Ah, there we go. So that is the recipe. And they are not cheap. But at least now I know where to, to go to get those. Anything else in town that we really want to investigate? I don't think I've been to the temple quarter.
Doesn't look like there's a lot to do here. Clear skies, citizens. Clear skies, citizens. Yeah. There's Galliot. He was on my last adventure. Greetings, deputies. Greetings, Galliot. Of course it's my name. What are you implying? Nothing at all. We just want to establish who we're talking to. Dalliot Sunbird, scout of the council. You know- Trust us. We're all on the same side here. We'll see. Not much to that interaction. All right, so let's go ahead and head out. And we're going to head to the possible Sorak base. But first, I think what we'll do is go back to Karelam. Stop there before we head on. Tink kills a deer. Nice. Goblins and a bandit. This is pretty clear, too, as to what your order of initiative is, who's attacking when. Skeletons? What are those? Must be a necromancer. Let's move this way. And put my hunter's mark on him. Attack him. Nope, that was a hit, what do you know? Alright, so you're gonna just do a standard attack. And I really like the combat log. It's very clear. traveling we're gonna get a long rest so you never have to worry too much about using up your spells because unless you're already had all of your long rests before you get intercepted you're gonna get everything back nope can't so abort and let's disengage this way let's see if they're in range
You've seen worse. That should be it. You'll die like the rest. Rogues do have cunning action, so I could disengage, but I'm just going to stay where I am. Too slow! don't level up in this game until you're at a long rest so we can continue along the way now I believe Because we have that option selected, when we get our next long rest on our travel, it should interrupt automatically and allow us to level up. Yep. For the fighter, we'll get to select a martial archetype. Champions focus on the raw physical power honed to deadly perfection. Those who model themselves on this archetype combine rigorous training with physical excellence to deal devastating blows. Mountaineer are trained to fight in difficult terrain and confined spaces. They are, cap they are capable skirmishers and know how to take advantage of small spaces given the right equipment. And Spellblade, skilled with arcane magic as with their weapons. That almost sounds like an eldritch knight. And this versatility is a weapon in itself, often surprising enemies who tend to think an armored fighter cannot cast spells. I think we're gonna go champion route. level up our cleric so we get I think it's one extra second level spell and let's 
see if we have anything new that we want here. So we have aid and blindness. What else do we have as options? Hold person, prayer of healing. All right, let's get rid of blindness. Let's take aid and prayer of healing because this is going to be a traditional cleric. our archetype. We're going to get a spell slot and primeval awareness as a class feature so it detects the presence of certain creature types in the location and I believe that's based on whoever I picked as my favorite enemy at character creation. So we can go with Hunter. Emulating the hunter archetype means accepting your place as a bulwark between civilization and the terrors of the wilderness. As you walk the hunter's path, you will learn specialized techniques for fighting the threats you face. Marksmen are experts with a bow, inheriting techniques developed by the elite high elven troops of Manakalan Empire. They are the deadliest ranged combats on Salasta, or Shadow Tamer. Used to wandering the desolate lands beyond the marches, they know the lore and languages of darkness and the hazards and customs of those dreadful caves inhabited by monsters. And I think we're going to go with Hunter. Choose one of the following specialties. Just out of curiosity. Dim or light darkness, you gain advantage on dexterity saving throws. Attacking a creature with sensitivity or hypersensitivity to light with a weapon, you add your proficiency bonus to hit and damage. Yeah, let's go with Hunter. Once on each of your turns, when you down an opponent, you can make another attack with the same weapon against a different creature. That's actually kind of nice. Let's level up our rogue. So again, we're going to pick an archetype. Thief. Hone their skills in the larcenous arts. In addition to improving their agility and stealth, they learn skills useful for delving into ancient ruins, reading unfamiliar languages, and using magic items they normally couldn't employ. That gives us fast hands. Second story work. Climbing no longer costs you extra movement. Difficult climb services are considered normal, and you can jump longer distances. Dark Weaver. Trained by a secret society that extends throughout the kingdoms, they have developed techniques to improve their mobility in all three dimensions and master the art poison crafting. Proficient with Poisoner's Kit. Climbing no longer costs extra movement. When hitting an enemy on the lower ground with a ranged weapon, add your proficiency bonus to the damage. That's actually kind of nice. And then Shadow Caster. 
trained in arcane magic as well as roguish abilities. They are tricksters who use magic to make their moves even more unpredictable and unstoppable. Some believe they don't really exist. So that gains spell casting. Wizard spells and cantrips from the divination, illusion, necromancy, and abjuration schools. And shadow dodge as a bonus action to teleport to a cell you can see within five cells. I kind of like that. Since we aren't going to have a traditional spellcaster in the party, I will say this though, the second story work and spider on the wall, those are actually pretty nice as well. But let's go with Shadowcaster. Hey Sergeant Horse, how's it going? This is uh, Celasta, it's an early access D&D 5th edition game. I'm playing it because it came up uh, as a suggestion for me, just as a comparison to Baldur's Gate. And uh, so far I really like it compared to Baldur's Gate, especially the character creation, and it sticks a little bit more solidly to the 5th edition rule set. also really sticks to um, armor class advantages and penalties. So true strike, shadow dagger, and dazzle will be good cantrips. Took. Did we take Identify? No, I don't think we did. Let's do Identify, Shield. And... Detect Magic. Did we already select our... Yeah, we already selected our spells there. Alright, so there's our level up. Let's go ahead and resume our journey. Alright, so we're back at Carelem. And also, Sergeant Horse, I'll be back this afternoon um, with a continuation of the This Is Total War campaign. Yeah, the move went really well. I did all the small stuff in my car and then rented a van yesterday to get the big stuff with a buddy of mine. So all moved in. Now I just need to get a coffee table and some... <laughs> Some other stuff that I wasn't able to take with me from the from the old house. So we've already been through this whole area. The only reason I came back was to give us a small break from the travel. One thing that really confused me was why I couldn't get to some of these areas, which is why I came back here. I want to see if that's possible. No path to destination. So I'd actually have to go back through the ruins, which I'm not going to do. So let's go ahead and leave. And then we'll head to the Sorak base. Let's 
Let's go with slow travel this time. Mostly because I want to see what kind of difference that makes. Endless Legends. I'm not familiar with that one. sure slow travel really helped us out any here. studio called uh, Tactical Adventures. And I don't believe we took Divinity, so we don't have Turn Undead. Huh. Let's see what that does. Skeleton, so blunt weapons would do more damage, but say la vie. switch back to our longbow just yet. This guy, since he still has you yet to act. Oh, you'll die like the rest. And then we're gonna head this way. Oh! 
or pause. Where on earth is he going? Coming your way. All right, let's switch to the short bow. Some dim lights are attacking and disadvantage. Cover also works really nicely in this game. Uh oh. Walk it off. Ah, oh, 
shoot, now I can't see them. <laughs> healing desperately? Nope. in this game. Why couldn't I? Oh, you have to go up from that side. You can't get up from that side. Well, we'll take the arrows. That's what I forgot to do before I left town. Sell my gems. One thing I'm 
haven't figured out yet is how to, there we go, that's how you, I thought you had to press control, but that was just one at a time. All right, let's continue our long rest. Oh, I might have to gather her in. Nope. found a way in. Alright, Tink. You're going to go into cautious mode. the area. Nope. What the hell did we just stumble into? These aren't Sorax. They seem human. What exactly are they doing? What's it look like they're doing? They're digging something up. Nope. Just another dusty pile of rubble from before the cataclysm. Who are these people? Scavengers? Hard to say. I see no tent or flag signifying their allegiance. Well, there's one way to find out. Perhaps we should sneak a little closer. Or simply walk in and see how friendly they are. I don't think we'll just walk in. save. Why can't I save? Oh, because I was moving, I think. Alright, which way do we want to go? Looks like we can climb down here? get over here. I wonder if there's going to be a way around that guy. Oh, found a chest. Nice. 
Nice. What's this? Is there anything else in it? Just a candle. All right, no interactables. Ooh, there's an interactable. Ah, discovered. Tank is down there all by herself. Too far away to hit me. Yep. So let's. We can do that in turn. Disengage. Let's do dash. Spell. They're all nice and gathered up. Yeah, everybody's out of range. Still out of range. So awesome. Away. 
Alright, let's get our Hunter's Mark going. did I miss? That's a good question. How did you miss? Oh. Alright, so now let's do There it is. Shadow dodge. Tink. Should have switched weapon sets first. Can I still? Yes, I can. You can take it. Alright, you need to switch back to your weapon set.
Jeez. Why is he not getting his second attack? I feel like the weapon set's not in his hand correctly. Close enough? Ouch. Walk it off. Well, oh, he's set up correctly. Oh shoot, I meant to disengage. You missed anyway, that's alright. Actually, we don't want to use healing word. I owe you one. Anyway, Ouch. here. Why not? Oh! God!
Oh, I should have actually dang it, cast my cantrip there. What do you think? They look like people to me. Unless they have been transmogrified <laughs> and are in disguise. What's that symbol there? The tattoo? Looks like an A. They all have it. Guess they're all part of the same club. Well, there's no reason to assume it signifies something sinister. Do you think it has anything to do with the Sorax? A could stand for Aravat, one of the many names of Sortar, the Sorak god. Are you kidding me? Well, that's not good. At least we know we're in the right place. Should we see what they're doing here? Yes, but we should also keep an eye out for any stray Soraks. If a Sorak shows up, we need to cut off its head. Apparently they didn't have any loot. Just that chest, huh? Anybody need healing? Eh, not desperately. Yeah, there's no sense in using that spell up right now. Let's go see what this rock does. Oh, it wasn't a rock. It was a basket. So, he's doing short sword, short sword right now. Let's change that to rapier, short sword. Give those to her. Doesn't have a scroll kit, otherwise she'd be able to to craft that. So we need to remember to pick up a scroll kit. Let's head into the cave. Oh wait, no, wait, wait. Oh, that was just the short sword I dropped.
chest down there. You could stack these. Ooh, there's somebody down here. Another worker. This one looks like he wants to talk to us. Please don't kill me! What are you doing here? I'm just a worker. Are you tattooed with an A? I, I, you don't understand. Are you one of them? One of what? I'm just trying to survive. I had no choice. What does the tattoo signify? It's... I can't... He's dead? How's that possible? How is any of this possible? He was doomed from the start. Tracks spotted. Right there. All right, Tink, do your thing. Aha. Uh Gather up. Uh, uh. <coughs> Crawl Dive through. in the dirt now. That was, uh, unexpected. This place is topsy-turvy. Remind me not to take a dump in that hole? <laughs> Do you really have to make jokes? <laughs> yeah, it's in my contract. Did Karen not tell you? Might be good to remember what these blue currents can do. <laughs> Remind me not to take a dump in that hole. All right, so how do we get through this? Yep, we can jump across it. Doesn't 
doesn't seem to be any traps. Whoops, what did I just do? turned on automatically. What happens if you fall down there? Want to try? <clears throat> Interesting, the lights all just turn on by themselves. All right, well, we know what's gonna happen here. That's gonna float up. <clears throat> Too easy. Well, that didn't do a damn thing. Did you really think that would open the door? We need to be smarter about this. Think it through. Hmm. We need to go knock that over. Oh, there's a door there. back this way. A chest. Tells me walking over there's a bad idea. Okay, there's a rock. Is this there. one of those rocks that? Why don't I 
see it now. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now we come back up, I guess. Beautiful craftsmanship. She looks like an empress. She doesn't bear the proper regalia. Not for a man Callan. More likely she was a wizard, a master of the Arcanium. Could this have been her home? Possibly. Her bones are probably buried somewhere under all these bloody books. <laughs> You're an idiot. Just up here. There's a chest up here somewhere. It's up here. this door. Alright, Tank, go do your thing. Detect traps and such. Ah. Interesting. It's in remarkable condition, considering how long it's been here. Do you think it has magical properties? A spellbook that predates the Cataclysm. And I should care, because... A long-forgotten spell. A valuable secret. But it looks to be locked. Take it. Perhaps someone in Care Kiflin will know how to open it. Yeah, but right now, we have more important shit to take care of. I know. Expect the unexpected. Where did that go? Oh, create a bridge up here. How do I create a bridge down there? I have to knock that over. How do I get down there to do that? Ah, that's how. There's a ladder there.
It's a Sorak. You see that? Is that a Sorak? I don't think so. <laughs> It's hilarious. Of course it's a Sorak. I wonder if I should not have jumped down there. Well, there must be a way back up. Your trap. Why not? Are those webs? Uh oh. Uh. All right. Probably time to be cautious again. Do your thing. back up here. Why is that red?
Light will guide us. next time.
probably going to be all spider glands. We'll take a few of them. I don't want to be encumbered. So, let's go take a look at this. Another statue. These guys really love themselves. <laughs> now this is an emperor. A famous one too. Lerithir Imradir. He was the Emperor at the time of the Cataclysm. Good job managing the trouble, mister. <coughs> All these books sure floating fast. around, and I can't grab them. Uh oh, my lights all went out. Oh, no, they didn't. Uh, roll, 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 roll. Almost to the chest. We'll let Tink go up there. Wait. No, I want you to come up here. No path to destination. There's. There's a ladder right there. Why am I not going up the ladder? I don't believe that there is actually no path to destination. What kind of runes are those? Enchanted runes from the ancient imperial period. It is said that they had eight schools of magic. Each is represented here, all as equals. This place is astounding. Yeah, you could tell that to the Sorax right before they cut us to frickin' pieces. The room puzzle. Find the hidden runes that are barely shining on the ground and step on them to activate them. There's one. I stepped on some magical rune. I guess there's a reason for that. Another one here. Yeah, where's the last one?
nothing. Very funny. Activate the orb. So now we go all the way back. But why can't I get up here? Here, let me go up it. I guess not. So now we walk all the way back around. Maybe you can jump across there. Yep. This orb. We did it. Was that insane puzzle the work of some long dead Manakalan wizard? Probably. Even from the tomb, that magical asshole is messing with us. That's where we're going to end this session for today. I will be back this afternoon to do some This is Total War. Uh -huh. the continuation of that campaign. Uh -huh. But wanted to demo some of this. Just because I really, really like the character creation and the way they stick to the 5e rule set. So that'll do it for uh, Celasta for now. If you have any questions or comments, do feel free to leave those down below and check back in this afternoon for some Total War action. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me if you haven't had a chance already. It does help grow the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. And we'll see you back here for the next episode. Thanks a lot.